Just to start off, thank you to the patrons for this one. This video would not be possible without your help. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Don't lie, we've all browsed Wish, and we've all browsed Wish one day seeing a collector's item going for an incredibly low price. But we're all a bit wiser than that. We know that if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. I don't. I got hacked by a fraudulent sponsor that offered me $500 to advertise in the past. And so I purchased a selection of different Spider-Man action figures to see what we actually get when ordering these collector's items from Wish. Also, obviously not exclusively Wish, you can get these kind of things at Wish, AliExpress, eBay, it depends. Any kind of website that hosts a number of different sellers, you will find counterfeit goods. But it must be said, with how overpriced a lot of these figures are, all because they are quote-unquote collectors, items. It is tempting, especially looking at some of these reviews here. So in today's video, we will be telling a story of Spider-Man's Hollywood history through the ages through the eyes of bootleg action figures. So Walter, take it away. So first up, we're going to be getting a bit nostalgic with the Revel Tech Spider-Man 3 Spider-Man figure representing the Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire era of Spider-Man. Now, this of course is not the real Revel Tech Spider-Man 3 figure. It is a knockoff. It is a bootleg that you can get on Wish. And um, so for starters, He's actually not too bad, like visual wise, like the paintwork on him is really nice. Some chipping around the sort of jaw area there, you can see where the web's coming through, but still not a bad looking figure visually. Um, articulation wise, a little bit on the limited side, like the arms can be about that much, very clicky joints, but like it's still, it moves fine. Got a bit of swivel here that can turn and you can get him in some pretty decent poses. He can do kind of the splits, kick forward, kick back. Uh, the double jointed knees, all that jazz, blah, 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 uh, ab crunch and all that. Head can look up a little bit and can look down a lot. You can have a depressed Spider-Man. Uh, I'm sad because Mary Jane broke up with me. So yeah, no, uh, great uh, figure articulation wise. Feels a little teensy teensy bit on the fragile side. And also this uh, upper joint can pop off quite easily, but you could easily just stick the peg back in that peg hole there, and it's no trouble at all. So, yeah, overall, not a bad little figure. Looks really good, uh, plenty of articulation, and not bad. But of course, this also comes with a ton of additional accessories in this little bag here. So we're gonna unpack some of these and take a look at them. First up, let's just take a look at this massive base here, and um, I'm guessing it's like a stand for it. Let's uh, take a look. Oh, okay. Lots and lots of small parts. So this is not intended for a child by any stretch. Um, so that, I guess... Okay, so that... Hmm. Okay, so there's a little hole in a peg. Okay, so that causes that to stand up so that, you know, it's not falling all over the place. And I guess these pin in here. And then, um, is there any pins on Spidey? Yes! On his feet are these little peg holes. So, um... Well, anyway, yeah, that's that. Spider-Man, you stand against that for a sec. Nope, okay. Uh, what else have we got? We've got... This long web line here with a little end to it. We've got, oh, how quaint, um, Spider-Man name tag thingy there. Given that this is a knockoff, I'm half surprised it doesn't say like Batman or something on it. Um, we've got a container, which I guess you could put all these little rods in, which is great. And we've got lots and lots and lots of additional hands. We've got more web, and we've got, let's see what hands we've got. We've got these happy, waving, high-five hands, you know. Hello! Ah, uh, what else? We've got a web thwipping hand for when Spider-Man is, you know, doing his webs. I'm almost hesitant to kind of take out the hands, though, because you know what these bootlegs can be like, and I feel like the joints inside the hands are a little on the brittle side, but we'll give it a shot. Um, 
more web hats. So yeah, we just got doubles up of these hands. Um, so we'll uh, we'll see if we can get this guy displayable. So there he is, our resident Spider-Man on his little display base thingy. I don't manage to get the hands on him. A uh, little bit. You got to be very careful with the hands, but uh, it looks great. He poses well. He stands on his stand really well. Um, I must admit, I'm very impressed with this. Now, the Revotech Spider-Man 3 figure, I'm using this to point at it, costs, well, it retails at about around about 90 these days, $90. Um, this was, I think, $7. So, um, yeah, actually, honestly, really impressed with this figure. Um, I don't own the original because I'm not a millionaire, but, like, um, still, like, uh, I've seen pictures of it, and it... This really isn't far off. So, very impressed. This little case for the hands and stuff comes in handy too. So, yeah, overall, great value, great set. Very impressed. But, of course, the Supreme Overlords at Sony decided it was time for a reboot. All good things must come to an end, including the perfect little hamburger that is the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. And so we got Mark Webb's Amazing Spider-Man duology. And, okay, so this is a bootleg of the Figma... <laughs> Figma balls. The Figma Amazing Spider-Man figure, which retails at around about $120. Um... Once again, it's a five-inch scale figure. Can't understand why you would pay anything more than, like, $20 for a five-inch scale figure. Well, anyway, um, once again, looks absolutely fantastic. In fact, this is probably the most impressive one of the bunch so far. I mean, the Raimi figure looked great, but this, look, look at the level of detail on this. Like, let's move him a little closer. Look at all that detail. The paintwork on him is flawless, pretty much. Like, I'm so impressed with this, even down to the back spider on the back as fragmented as you expect it to look. It looks amazing. He's incredibly articulated with his joints also being very easily removable, but they can be popped back on very easily as well. I think that is a deliberate decision. One bone of contention I have though is this left leg, as you can see, is loose as balls. I've tried tightening up a bit, but it makes it very difficult for him to stand on his own. You can do it, but like it's, yeah, it's not designed for that. Luckily, he comes with a lot of accessories, and one of those accessories is a posing display arm thingy, so you can literally have him levitate if you want. Not sure why you would, but that's not the only accessory that this awesome little figure comes with. Uh, let's take a look at what else he has to offer. You get this little baggie here, which has lots of different hands inside it and stuff. You get um, web thwipping hands, and if you look at that, you can see how detailed that is. Like the blue on the wrists and everything, awesome. You've got this uh, cum here, and um, we've also got this teensy, teensy, teensy little mobile phone, which my phone will not focus on. Can't you focus on one of your own? Come on. There you go. Literally, it's your species. What do you have against it? And probably my favorite accessory of the bunch, this little backpack, which goes on really nice and easy. So, um, yeah, let's have like a little demonstration then, shall we? Also, I, I really don't know what this does. I think it's to um, display his hands in. I'm not sure. But like, yeah, there's that. Um, I don't know, really, like, because the hands don't really stay snugly in there, so, like, it's, you know, I don't know, I don't know what that is. Also, I didn't show you this earlier, but, like, look at this wall-crawling hand, look at the detail on that. That's awesome, in fact, also, remember, uh, Amazing Spider-Man wears these A6 shoes, and look, look, look at the detail on there, that's, that's incredible. Like, for a bootleg? For, like, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but I was not expecting this kind of quality from a bootleg figure. As you can see here, he's got this little grabbing hand, which can hold onto his phone like so. Removing the hands is very easy. You can remove the lower part of the arm just to make it that little bit easier for you, and it just slots out like so. And uh, you can put in a web thwipping hand. But let's go one better. We'll also add the little web itself to the web thwipping hand, so it looks like he's actually shooting a web out. So if we do that, and then pop that on the end of his arm there. Very snugly. There we go. And look, you can even see how it lines up with the web shooter, so it really looks like it's coming out of his wrists. Awesome. Getting the backpack on is easy as pie. You just remove his arms nice and easily. I think you can do it without, but this is just my preferred method of doing it. Um, remove that. 
like so. And then you can just really easily put this little backpack over his shoulders. It's not a Jan Sport one, at least I don't think it is. Like it doesn't appear to be. I mean, that's gonna be a licensed thing, but yeah, that goes nicely on his back. And then, um, and then yeah, we've got our amazing Spider-Man with his phone in one hand and a web shooting out of the other. Backpack on his back, looks like he just, you know, got out of school or something, and he just looks terrific. I think um, one thing that I guess is a bit questionable is if you didn't like the uh, yellow or golden eyes on Amazing Spider-Man, they are like a they are like a reddish orange on this figure. So yeah, a quiet. Ooh, that looks dynamic, doesn't it? Doesn't that look awesome? It's like video thumbnail material there. So yeah, so far I have to say I think this is my favorite of the bunch. A surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. So, of course, after The Amazing Spider-Man, we had an incredibly shoddy sequel, which was The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now, let's see if the action figure is as shoddy as the film itself. So, here we have the bootleg Amazing Spider-Man 2, which is based on a Marvel Legends figure. Now, right off the bat, this figure looks, um, sculpt-wise, it's not far off. Like, the sculpt is... The thing is, I would say this about the real Marvel Legends Amazing Spider-Man 2. This doesn't really look like the Amazing Spider-Man 2. It looks more like a comic booky Spider-Man. Like, there's nothing about this that screams Amazing Spider-Man 2. For starters, those frames are too thick. They're much closer to a comic book Spider-Man on the on the lenses there. Don't know how well you can see that. But um, the one thing that's really a giveaway that this is an Amazing Spider-Man 2 figure would be this symbol if it were a bit clearer. But I mean, I guess if we take a look on the back. Yeah, that's not a comic book back spider. That there is the Amazing Spider-Man 2 back spider. And might I also just say, admirably painted. Like, that's very precise. So, um, yeah. So, for starters, the main giveaway that this is a knockoff is the paint job. This looks like I painted it. Like, um, as you can see, there's completely imprecise paint all over that front spider. Just like someone just took black paint and just fliff all over it. Um... There is a black wash within the webbing. This actually looks better on camera than it does in person. In person, this looks like Electro just fucking burnt the ever-loving shit out of Spider-Man, which he does in that film. But, um, yeah. So, paint job, really shoddy, especially on these eyes here. Like, that's very imprecise. Like, that is bad. Also, it's sticky. The paint here is sticky. Like, I, I could swear I was getting black marks on my thumbs earlier when I was just playing with this. In terms of articulation, it is accurate to what a Marvel Legends figure is. In fact, all of these joints are really clicky, and I think that's a positive thing. Like, a bootleg figure usually comes in really loose. This eh, is a little wibbly, but, like, um, the thing with this figure is the chest part here feels really brittle, and these parts here are this very soft, very flexible plastic, and that's... Yeah, that doesn't feel good to pose. Like, it, it, yeah, like, he, he's very articulated. That, like, look at... Okay, then. <laughs> Glad we got that on camera. Um, let's see if we can put old Humpty Dumpty here back together again. Um, hmm. So, that's... I'm gonna go in there. And that would go... In bollocks. Hang on. Sort of. I think we're gonna have to clip this all together. Um, come on. Come on. Oh. Hey, there we go. So. Oh, yay, yay. Look at that. That's not even glued. Um, bollocks. Um, we'll figure this out. We'll figure this out later. But as it stands, yeah. No, uh, not a lot I can really say about this. Those legs are so gappy. Like, there's also white marks all over the plastic in here. Like, what are these white marks? Did someone jizz all over my figure? Like, what is this? Um, yeah, no, so... For $6, he's not too far off the real deal, but fuck me, just buy the real deal if you didn't already miss the boat. Like I did, because I'm a sucker. Now, go play football with your own head, Spider-Man. Okay, I managed to snap him back together, but it's safe to say that this figure is good for three minutes. Three minutes of playtime. 
So, of course, it's no secret that as far as Spider-Man films go, and it's vastly considered this way anyway, uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, cut to bits by Sony, they screwed the pooch. But don't worry, Marvel Studios are here to save the day with the Tom Holland Spider-Man, and representing this era, we have the homemade Spider-Man Homecoming figure. Now, this is based on the S.H. Figuarts, um, MCU Spider-Man, and, um, he retails at about $96, this came in at about 6 um, much like all the other figures, and once again, he looks excellent. Uh, a whole lot better than that ghastly Amazing Spider-Man 2 figure, as the paint apps on this guy are clear as day, they look really nice. I mean, it's a very simple paint job, the MCU hoodie Spider-Man, but like, if you look at like the web shooters, like, the paint there is a little bit more complex, and they look good. The paint apps on the eyes aren't perfect, but they're by no means bad. Um, and of course, he comes with a ton of accessories. Um, in, te in terms of articulation, one complaint I have, this arm is as free as a bird. It is very loose. And then, of course, that, um, that ab crunch, loose, 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 loose. Looser than my mother's coochie, I'd imagine. Gross. Don't even want to ever mention that again. Um, in terms of articulation, he can look up about that far. He can look down a lot. He can be very sad. He's a oh, Tony Stark took my suit. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. But yeah, no, we're, we're going to have him be a happy Spider-Man because that's more what the MCU Spider-Man is. He's a bit more emotionally well-adjusted than other Spider-Men. Um, Articulation-wise, yeah, though, he's really good. Lots of foot articulation, pivot on the ankles, all that jazz. Um, yeah, this can do this, rotate and all that. Yeah, so yeah, he's a very well-articulated figure. Um, he doesn't feel too fragile, which is great. Um, and yeah, in terms of the accessories, we've got... Lots and lots of hands for every different hand thing you could what? Hang on. Hmm. Interesting. That's not a typical thwipping hand. And that is. Okay. That's that's a very interesting new hand position. You can go on for both hands. Really cool. Okay. Uh, crawly hands for when he's, you know, crawling. Uh, two giant cum strings that attach the same way the... Hmm. I don't know how that one attaches, but... This one here has a hooky bit, which will attach the way it did on the Amazing Spider-Man figure. So, let's try out some of these combinations, starting with this hoodie piece, which comes off like this. So you can have your hood down Spider-Man, and if you don't want that, you can have hood up Spider-Man, which, uh, I get... Hmm. I'm not sure how this goes on. Uh, um, hmm. Like, I'm worried I'm gonna damage it. Oh, there we go. There we go. Not, not brilliant in terms of design that feature there. Um, I don't know if this is supposed to slot in. Like, there's a little nub down there, but there's no slot bit on this hoodie bit. So, yeah, it's um, you're going to have to rely on Spider-Man kind of leaning forward to get that hoodie the way you want it. As it stands, I prefer it with the hood down, because I've never understood Spider-Man costume with hoods. Like, they would surely just fly off when he's web-swinging. Um, tell that to Spider-Gwen. Uh, come on. Get on there. Get, there we go. This one here has this little uh, hook on it, which just hooks in like so, so that keeps it there a bit better. But it does pop off very easily if you are playing with it. Let's try out some uh, different hand combinations as well. So I wanted to try a thwippy hand on him, but these don't fit on very well at all. Like, even, even with that off, and I'm worried about shredding that inner joint. So that's... yeah, that's not happening. I don't know about any of these other hands, but... Um, for now, that one isn't great. The fist hand does... Yeah, the fist hand goes back on a whole lot easier. So, um, as for the web... You put the web shooter back on. Um, that slots all the way down there. It's all good. It's all gravy, baby. We can pop a web on here. And that can look like it's shooting out of the nozzle if you position it right. And then the hand goes on there. Like, so? Nah, I, I don't know. Um, that, I don't think that's gonna happen. Just gonna put the hand back on the way it was. Um, so yeah, a bit disappointed in that. Um, that's such as life with a bootleg. There's no real quality control there, so the hands might not fit the way you want them to. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's not a good fit. Um, but we do the best we can here. Um, yeah, so overall, really good figure overall. Like, for the price anyway. Like. The thing you could say is, well, if you buy the real deal at the full price, you, you know, you get hands that fit, you don't have to worry about this, but, um, 
between like $6 and $90. I'm happy to pay the price of floppy joints and not changing his hands. Cause I mean, I'm only gonna display it as an action figure anyway. So yeah, um, truth is I don't, I don't get five inch scale figures like this costing that much money. It's not like, what are they made of fucking gold or something? Like, I think it's because they're being branded as collector's figures. Well, the kids' figures are, you know, they usually get like a very simplified range and stuff, but like, how does it cost them enough to warrant that price? You know, it's highway robbery. Like, it really is. Like, I remember when I was a kid, you could get a Marvel Legend Spider-Man, um, and this was like in like 2002. That would be a similar quality to this uh, Reveltech uh, bootleg. Uh, I guess more close to the real deal, like would have been even higher quality than that. And it would cost like $7? And it comes with this little gargoyle and this little stretchy string and stuff, and uh, like he was really poseable. Like what happened to toys, man? I'm telling you, like... Have you seen? Have you seen the Marvel Legends, um... Spider-Man Far From Home figure? Looks like a fucking McDonald's toy. But like, yeah, they charged like $20 for that, like... This is where we're at now, this is the toy economy. Anyway, uh, yeah, that was a tangent, but, um, yeah, overall, not bad, not bad. Like, as just a figure alone, not bad, but if you want to be using these accessories and stuff, um, be so, so careful. I don't trust myself, personally. So, yeah, be very careful, and this hood piece, uh, definitely needs, like, a fastener on it, but overall, he's fine. He was, you know, for, for six bucks, like, you can't go wrong with that. But of course, that's not it for big screen Spider-Man, as there's not just been Raimi, Mark Webb, and MCU Spider-Man, we've also got Into the Spider-Verse, which I couldn't find any action figures of on Wish, so I settled for a Marvel's Spider-Man one. Uh, not sure if that ties in with the Marvel Spider-Man animated series or not, but one thing that is a bit suspect is, is that a Disney seal of approval? Uh, these bootleggers are either getting good or Wish have accidentally sent me a real deal one, in which case you're getting drunk, but Everything here is Chinese, so I would have no idea if this is official, real or not. I did bugger up the box a little bit myself, but it's not a bad little box, has to be said. So if this is a bootleg, I must admit, a little impressed by it already. Just on the virtue of it having a decent box. But we don't buy these things as collector's items, we buy them to pose and play with and such, so to hell with the box. Good box though. Uh, plastic seal, let's unbox it then. That comes out like so. And, um, hmm. Japanese stuff, okay. Ah, uh, yes, another posing arm, which is great. I'm thrilled with that. I like that on the Amazing Spider Man figure, and I like it here. And let's see, we've got Miles himself, who is. Hmm. Hmm. He stands well, that's for sure. He's big. He's a, he's a much heftier Spider-Man than the others that we had in the other Spider-Man figures. Any of the Peters, anyway, I guess it's a rule of thumb. Miles is bigger than Peter. We've got these two hands taped up in here, which I'll get out in just a sec. Maybe I'll do it off, I'll do that off camera, I think. But let's take a look at Miles, anyway. Um, so, uh, posing-wise, he's quite, he's quite adept. Um, that rotates, uh, he's got butterfly, wow. I don't know what, who, who makes this? Who makes this figure? Um, yeah, very surprised by the articulate clicky ab crunch. That's always a good sign. Um, let's take a closer look at the paintwork. He looks great. The web lines are all painted, all very precise. Uh, mm, disappointment, no spider on the back. And on the front, that's a Raimi spider. That is evidence of a Raimi Spider-Man. Um, Leg articulation is all fine and buttery. He's got, what about his feet? Can they can they pose? They're stiff. They they rotate, but they don't really do much else. Okay, so simple. Uh, he look. Oh, oh, that's evidence of a good figure. He looks up a long way. What about down? Yeah, he can also be sad. Uh, the, the the tinkerer is a is a very bad person, and she's ruined my day. And. I wish my friend were a nicer person, and not totally an evil bitch. Um, yeah. Uh, am I impressed? I am. I am. Doesn't really have much hand, but he has a little bit. Do they come out easy? No, I don't even think I want to try that. But, um, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. 
I guess one thing that's a little bit disappointing is it only comes with one thwipping hand, and it's just this one. The other, the other one is a grabbing hand, so you have robbed me of that choice, bootleggers from, I don't know, wherever the fuck you're from. So, while easily the sturdiest figure of the bunch, um, his hands do come off, they're ball-jointed, but you have to absolutely molest the figure to get these on, and I don't want to break it. I don't trust it, it's a bootleg. Um, either way, what an awesome figure. Overall, pretty impressed. So there we have it, our grand lineup of Spider-Man, and look how huge Mars Morales is. Uh, these guys here, the Revel Tech, uh, the Figma, and the uh, SH Figuarts are not to scale with your average Marvel Legends figure, unless you of course discount the fact that maybe the Tom Holland Spider-Man, especially in Homecoming, would be shorter than the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. Um, but like, Miles Morales just towers over these guys. What is he, like, like the nine inch scale or something? I got no idea. So, um, basically, uh, you might see this video and think this is an endorsement for bootleggers. Um, it's not. Basically, uh, if you buy a bootleg, you could get lucky like I did with this figure, this figure, this figure, and this figure. But you could also end up with a figure like this which looks like it was painted by a monkey and falls apart really easy and doesn't feel good to play with in the slightest. Um, so there is no quality control with these knockoffs and clones, but um, it's a gamble. It's a gamble. If you're willing to part with the money and take the risk on getting a shitty figure like this, it can end up offering you a decent alternative at an affordable price to these collector range figures, which I do not understand why they have to be as fuck expensive as they are. Like, I, I guess, if anything, I don't want to encourage bootleggers, I don't want to encourage people to buy bootlegs, because quality control is not there, it's an illegal ass backdoor industry, but the fact is, the fact that these bootlegs came out as good as they did, at such a teensy, teensy fraction of the price that the originals are, with, I, I don't know what the origin of this guy is, but the fact that these guys came out as they did proves that they do not need to cost that much. They, they, they're just capitalizing on the collector's market, and as for kids, you get shitty little toys. And it's just like, I remember when I was a kid, and I, I'm, I'm not just being nostalgic here, I'm not just being biased. I remember when I was a kid, you got action figures way better than what they offer to kids these days. If you want anything good, it's a collector's figure. Like, the figures I had as a kid that would cost like $7 approximately would be in, in line with this sort of quality, or this sort of quality. Um, so it's just like, it, it is an objective quality thing. Um, but maybe it comes down to the fact that maybe kids are more interested in technology than they are action figures these days. Who knows? But... Yeah, on a whole, it does paint an unflattering picture of the toy market these days when these knockoffs are coming out as favorable for the price as they are. But obviously, there are drawbacks, like some hands removal and stuff. You, If you're not careful, you can shred these figures to fuck. Especially this guy. He knows who he is. Um, the rest of them seem fairly robust. This guy here won't break. Uh, simply on the merit that he's designed to come apart and be put back together again. So, I guess, let's rank them. In last place, fifth place, we have the knockoff Marvel Legends Amazing Spider-Man 2 figure. The only thing amazing about this is how shoddy it is. The amazing, the only legendary thing about this is how legendarily shitty it is. The paint job is awful. The articulation is really mangled. There's all these white specks all over it. It's a very poor quality figure. I'd say you get what you pay for, but it turns out that the Marvel Legends... In, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 Spider-Man figure still retails at about the $19 mark, which is reasonable, to be honest. That's a reasonable price. Um, it's not like, say, the MCU Mysterio, which I've been really trying to get and has really gone up in value. Um, scalpers ruin everything. What can I say? If you're a scalper, fuck you. So, yeah, Amazing Spider-Man 2 Spider-Man, nah. In fourth place, we have the Homecoming Hoodie Spidey figure, which is a really good figure. Um, if you discount the fact that the uh, additional hands are just, you know, they're probably not going to clip on. I'm guessing maybe someone could with more elbow grease, but I just do not want to break the very delicate threads inside these uh, wrists here. But on a whole, it's simple, it's effective. I don't know why the real deal costs as much as it does, but this 
here is good. This is solid. I like this. Um, yeah, uh, just because it's, you know, second from last place doesn't make it a bad toy. In third place, Big Miles. Really clean paint apps, great articulation, no idea where the fuck he comes from or what uh, company he comes from because everything's in whatever language this is here. Um, the reason he's not a little higher is uh, simply on the basis that he has no spider on his back. And the uh, hands, again, I'm sure you could maybe, if you're willing to risk it, get those additional hands on there, but... Uh, I'm not willing to pay the risk, you know, this is this is a nice figure, I don't want to ruin it. So, um, yeah, a, a strong entry. It's so easy to be biased and say that this is the best one, because I'm pretty sure it's probably my favourite of the bunch, because it's a Raimi Spider-Man figure, and it's nostalgic, and Raimi Spider-Man is easily my favourite Spider-Man of the bunch. Um, but it, it comes in second place. I'm going to say this, I love this stand here. But I think I would just prefer a more basic stand, or at least the option of a more basic stand, actually, now that I think about it. That has a peg hole in it, he has peg holes on his feet, it could- nope, it's too wide, no, no, scratch that, there is no basic stand for this figure. Um, the accessories it comes with is great, the, there's an abundance of stuff, um, as I say, I would probably prefer just a normal stand to this diorama thing we've got going on here, but, um, it's a, it's a good one, it feels a little fragile, and the paint feels a little bit potentially chippy, but, um, also, his neck, a little on the fat side, but it's not bad. Um, yeah, articulation limited, but not bad, not bad. Um, uh, one thing, actually, I'm just noticing now is, that is the 2002 emblem he's got on his chest, but this is a Spider-Man 3 figure, and on the back is the 2004-2007 logo. So, um, I'm not sure if that's on the real deal or if this is exclusive to the bootleg, but I kind of like that hybridization, not gonna lie. Overall, really good. Well, I guess the Amazing Spider-Man had to be the best at something, and this figure is certainly it. Just for just how detailed it is, how precise the paint apps are, the articulation, the fact that he doesn't feel fragile. This this leg here is a bit off-putting in how loose it is, but uh, it's really not bad. The detail, as I say, incredible paintwork, incredible. Love this stand that he comes with, um, and I love his accessories of the backpack and the phone. So yeah, this is this one's a winner. But overall, they're a decent little bunch. So, let this be a message to the big toy manufacturers and the licensees. Like, the bootlegs are getting better, and your prices need to be a bit more competitive than they are right now. Because honestly, th this mostly wasn't a bad deal. But I'd be interested to know your thoughts. Comment below and discuss, and as always if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, hit subscribe, hit the like button, and in the description below are different links to different ways you can support me as well as social media stuff. Obviously also the Patreon, which is what funded this video, which is awesome, so thank you to those who do donate. Um, the rest of you, uh, I don't know. Please donate, I guess. If you have the spare pocket and you want to see more kind of stuff like this that costs me money otherwise. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys, and have a great day.